Welcome back to Excel Magic Trick 1864. And in this video, we got to talk about approximate match. Hey, here's some sales. Here's the approximate match lookup table. And I need to get the discount. Now in the worksheet, it's simple. We just use XLOOKUP. But in Power Query, we have to create our own lookup formula. Well, in my M code book that came out about a week ago, page 74, that is an awesome solution. List.last and table.select rows. And we'll take a look at that. But really, the way to go is on page 76, list.accumulate. So we'll look at both methods. All right, over here in the Power Query Editor, I've already imported the sales table. We need to go through, and for each row, we need to compare the sales to the discount table. And because there's not a built-in way, we're going to actually take the sale for each row and say, hey, sales in the first column, are you less than or equal to that value? We'll get a series of trues and falses. That'll filter the table. And then we'll go over and get the appropriate last discount. That's going to be the table.selectRows method. And I want to show you how to build it in the column first. And that way, we can see each step as the function evolves. Then I'll show you a cool trick when you paste it into Advanced Editor to make a reusable function. Let's go over to Sales. I've already started table.addColumn. And for each row, that's where a function goes. All I've done is pulled the discount table. Now, wait a second. The discount table is being pulled in each row. That means if you forget as the last step, this is the discount table, to buffer, that means just wrap table.buffer around the last step. Then it really slows down. What table.buffer does is it puts the table into memory so it doesn't have to keep calling it in each row. All right, in F sales approximate. This step right here, I've already added table.add column. For each row, we have a table. So I'm going to click inside one of the cells, not on the green table, because that'll extract it off to the side. And we can see the table. Now, here's what we need to do. That 774.61, that's going to be the individual value that's compared against each one of the sales in the first column of the lookup table. I'm going to ask, hey, 0, are you less than or equal to 774? True. 500, less than that? True. 1,000, less than that? False. It'll go through every single row, get a true and false, and then we'll filter this table right here using table.selectRows. But there's a problem. I'm going to use the sales column in the scope of table.addColumn, hitting every row. And I'm going to use the sales column from inside this table. And that's going to be in table.selectRows. Now, let's see how we're going to deal with that problem of two sales column. Table select. There's rows, open parentheses. So we can see there's a table, comma, space. We need a condition as a function. I would like to use each, but here's where we get into trouble. Each is working here on the column here, but this each is working whatever table this is iterating over, add data types. So I would like to define this column as a variable in the scope of table.addColumn, which means after this each. That way, that variable I can use down here and match up the sales column from inside the lookup table and the sales column value from each row from this table. And I'm going to define a variable using let. Sales will be the variable that we're going to use. And notice I'm using field access operators which allows us to get a column. In this case, since we're iterating, it gets the value. But there it is. I've just defined this sales in let. So now I can say in. Everything after in will be whatever the let expression evaluates. And after each, I'm allowed to say, hey, sales. And because that's after this each, it's going to pull that column, which is this one right there. And it's the whole column. And then I say less than or equal to the variable sales. Now, right now, this is going to be so cool because we'll get to see in each row whether this actually works. 
click the check mark. I forgot a parentheses after table.addColumn. And of course, the first one is not filtered because that value is not less than or equal to 2,000, but bam, right in the second row, 774, this table is filtered. Now what do we need? We need the discount column. Well, guess what? Table.selectRows, that is delivering a table. And how do we look up a column and return it as a list in M code? We use field access operators right after the close parentheses on table.selectRows which is defining a table. Discount, hopefully I spelled it right. Click the check mark. And now we have our list. Now we can use the function list.last. And whatever the last discount is, bam, that will be our value that is looked up. I see list.last. Close at the end, check mark. And bam, there's our formula. Now, this allowed us to see how the formula evolved step by step. But I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to copy this and go put it in Advanced Editor as a reusable function and use it over and over. And what's beautiful about that custom function is in parentheses, when we define our function, we'll define a variable sales which will automatically be at the scope for the table.add column. So we don't need any of this let. We just need this formula. Right up to close parentheses after discount. That's for list.last, copy, check mark. Right click, new query, other, and there's blank. We need to click Advanced Editor. And remove everything. And how do you define a function when you're not using each? You get to define in parentheses whatever the name of the variable is. I'm going to call it sales. And you get to define a data type as number. And since this is the, in essence, the variable for the function, right after those, after the close parentheses, we can say as number to define the data type from the output from the function. Then we use go to, which is that weird equal greater than, enter, enter, control V, and that formula will work. Now, this is pulling the table, which is the discount table. I'll show you an alternative to that in just a second. But that's all we have to do. No defining the let to get that correct scope. This function will do it itself. Click Done. I definitely want to name this, so I'm going to hit F2. Now, I called it, I have a few other ones here. I called it approx TS for table.select FX. And now we can come over to our sales table, come up to add column, invoke custom function. We get to name the new column. I'll call it something like that. And I'm going to get this one that we just created. It's saying, hey, which column do you want? I'm pulling from sales. When I click OK, just like that, we have our reusable function getting our approximate match discount. Now, here's one directly from the book. If we go look up an advanced editor, hey, instead of buffering the table, if you have a discount table that doesn't change much, here's the syntax to hard code a table right into M code. It's called an intrinsic function, pound table, type table. And then as a record, you define the two columns with the data type. Notice it's not as number, it's equal number. And then curly brackets to house everything. And for each record, you have the curly brackets. And then since I defined that as a variable, I said let that exist. And then in, there's our function referring to the hard-coded table. Now let's go see how list.accumulate works. Now right here, approximate LA for list.accumulate FX. Now here's the function that we're going to define, same variable, but we'll use list.accumulate. And list.accumulate can iterate over a list, get an intermediate value, and it only takes the last one. So for us, it'll take the last discount. Now the list that list.accumulate iterates is going to be in the first argument, 0 to 4, those represent the row positions in the lookup table, which has five rows. The second argument is a seed argument. That's a starting value. We do not need it in this case, so we put null. 
And then the third argument in list.accumulate has a very specific type of function. CS is the variable I'm defining. That means the current state. So as it iterates, picking out each discount until it gets to the last one, each one of those intermediate values is the current state. Current row for CR, that's whatever current row we're in in the list we're iterating. Those will be row positions. And what's beautiful about this construction is the function we'll make is an if statement, which will stop once it gets to the last discount. That's different than table.selectRows, which had to get a true or false for every single row. And it's the fewer iterations by using the if function, which makes the list.accumulate formula faster than table.selectRows. And here's how the if expression works. We say if the discount sales column, and notice CR is current row. So in positional index operator, that's the syntax to pull out the first row, which is base 0. So we'll take the first sales value and compare it against that external sales value. If it's true then, using the same CR, that 0 position, it'll take the first discount. There wasn't a false, so we don't get to this. Then we go to the next one, and it uses row 1. Now, let's go look at an example of where, for a particular row, this has many fewer rows to iterate than the table.select rows. Here's our approximate match. And let's just imagine what happens for the 774. We go over to D discount for table.select rows. It's going to get a true or false for every row, so five iterations. But if we have an if, we get true, true, false. So when it gets to false, then it takes the current state, which will be row 2 and 0 0.025. So there's only three iterations. And when you add up the time savings from the fewer iterations on a big, huge data set, that makes the formula a lot faster. So here's the one that we're going to go test. There's also the one from the book. I'll go up to Advanced Editor. I did the same thing. I hard-coded the table in, and I had a dynamic rows counting the table so that zero dot dot rows. This is dynamic depending on how many rows there are in the lookup table. All right, let's go try this last one. F sales approximate. We'll go up to add column, invoke custom function. We'll select the function LAFX. All we need is the sales column. Click OK. And bam, that's working too. Now I have a bunch of other queries here. And we'll go look at the result. So these are each tables with a million rows. And when I did table.selectRows, I got a time of 15 and 13. When I use list.accumulate, I got 9 and 8. And there's also another type of approximate match lookup where we do an append trick and a few other steps. And that one took a long time. So list.accumulate, be sure to read up on page 76 and page 77 where I have a bulleted list which go through those steps of why it's faster. That link for the M code book is below the video, and we'll see you next Excel magic trick.